welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this is The Cheese Show. You know, we do wine a whole, whole bunch. I think we're 320, 21 episodes in, and I thought on Laid Back Friday, what better way, and this is like half Laid Back Friday, let me get Laid Back. On Laid Back Friday, the couch episode, I was thinking, well, what better way than to do some cheese this week? I mean, I'm a major cheese fan. A lot of people realize that, who know me, that I prefer cheese to wine probably even. So it's kind of one of these things that I'm a huge fan of. Now the cholesterol thing happened, kahuna, you're getting killed, and I had to start really, you know, toning down on cheese. So I had to figure, how can I eat more cheese? How can I consume more? How can I enjoy it? Put it on the show. It's work. It doesn't count. So we've got four wonderful cheeses today, and an olive oil, because I want to talk about that. I got, I got very culinary on your asses today. So I'm excited about doing this. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great way to go into the weekend. Official prediction, because you know I'm going to give my Jets prediction right off the bat. Jets 17, Buffalo Bills 10, we go to 2-2, two and two, and next week we settle the score in the Battle of New York, and I will be taping an episode live from the Jets-Giants tailgate. First, first cheese. This is the Boon Bosch, which is from Vermont. It's a goat cheese. Um, it's actually uh, a, an American uh, Cheese Society winner, and it's got a thin ash, which the mold comes from. I know you wanted to zoom in. Go ahead, Eric. I know, I don't want to keep you all sad. And this is, a, you know, a, a cheese that is, is quite affordable. You know, it comes in at about $8 a rind, you know, just because, you know, Pac-Man, right? You, you like that? Pac-Man Jones. Pac-Man Jones, it's a whole nother story. Uh, again, you know, um, Goat cheese is something I'm very fond of. Obviously, I'm a big fan of port. Those two I have a whole lot of fun with all the time. Um, a lot of people are kind of meh on goat cheese, but I think it brings tremendous flavor, a, a lot of complexity, and, and I'm excited about, about trying this. The cheese dudes in Wine Library have been talking a lot of trash about this and saying a lot of good things about it, so let's give it a whirl. Let's see what it's all about. On the nose, it smells like goat cheese. You know, it's got a little hint of ashiness. There's a, there's a nice creaminess to it. But the ashiness is actually quite nice. You know like that uncle that always had like the ashes in his car, he'd take you to the big game. You know, it's kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Let's uh, let's give this a taste. It feels so weird with no wine. I don't know what to do. I, maybe I'll drink the, uh, the olive oil. The first thing I noticed with this cheese in comparison to a lot of goat cheeses is it's got an enormous amount of complexity. It's, it's very rich. I mean, it really does completely cover your palate. It's um, the creaminess of it. I don't want to go that, you know, that cream cheese avenue on this because it degrades this cheese, really. But the consistency of this goat cheese is far heavier and more complex than a lot of goat cheeses that I've had in the past. Um, again, really nice, almost, I don't want to call it oregano, but a really interesting kind of grainy kind of aspect on the finish. Quite nice. A lot of complexity. And let's talk about the wine pairings. We're going to flip the switch on it. This is definitely the kind of cheese that I would love to have with Hungarian Tokai. Uh, if you've never had Hungarian Tokai, you are missing out in a big time way. Eric, that's really one of your favorites. It's a little trivia. As a matter of fact, it's the only thing Eric will drink. Period. That's what he drinks at all times. Um, so, you know, it's, it's an excellent pairing for that because this actually makes me yearn. You know, a lot of people like to do the jellies and jams and, and all those things with cheese. The first thing, besides anything else, when I was tasting this cheese, I thought apricots. Flip the switch, the wine that most brings apricots to the table, Hungarian Tokai. I had a little in the pocket here. I got like a whole second flavor. It was like all the way in the back corner. It was awesome. Serenita is the next cheese. There you go, Eric. Doesn't look like Pac-Man. California, raw cow's milk. Comes from Three Sisters Farm. Um, aged for six months. Uh, they only make two cheeses. This is actually the younger version of the cheese they make. This is a, a $10 cheese by the pound. I assume that's how they sell cheese these days. Uh, I'm excited about trying this as well. Again, um, hard cheeses are a lot of fun uh, for me. I am more of a stinky, get your finger in it kind of cheese guy. We'll get to this cheese in a little bit. But uh, the hard cheeses can be a lot of fun as well because they're not as messy and because they're fun. You can break them up into little characters. You can do lots of fun stuff. You can play war. It's kind of fun. Anyway, let's get into this cow's raw milk. And do the smell. Actually, on the nose, it actually gives me a very... Actually, a 
very distinct cheddar kind of aspect to it. It really does come across a little bit like a cheddar cheese. Everett was pointing out to me that he feels it's a cheddar Gruyere kind of mix. I can totally see where he's coming from. A real explosion of flavor. I mean, what I love about this flavor really is that it actually tastes like, you know, really solid toe fungus. That's good. Um, and there's a real sharpness on the finish. Like like really, really sharp um, cheddar cheese actually. And, and the finish is quite long. Um, the, the creaminess factor is kind of in between. I wouldn't say totally culture palate. It's a very focused cheese, which, which, I'm, which I'm kind of liking. It's a very direct, really hits the middle of your palate. Nice. Nice solid finish, but you know, very very focused. You know, I wouldn't say I'm going berserk over this cheese. Um, it's a style thing. You gotta like what you like. Um, but what I will tell you is that this is a cheese that I would really really be interested to pair with a very steely flinty Chablis from Burgundy because I think that the styles would really match up well. Um, it, it's got a little bit of a nuttiness. I almost get a little walnut component that I'm coming through now on the finish, which is really quite interesting. So I, I do appreciate that as well. I'm actually much more serious about cheese than I am about wine. It's kind of interesting as I'm going through this. Um, really amazing stuff. Very, very, very interesting. All in all, not crazy my style. I think I've had a lot of average cheeses that taste somewhat similar to this. Maybe it's a, a level above, but I wouldn't go crazy, crazy over that. Let's move on. The Rothkoss, which is, I'm trying to make faces now with it, from Wisconsin. It's also raw cow's milk. Um, it's also in a Gruyere style. Um, this is uh, something, this is their private reserve and they make three other cheeses. So this is a very hand selected process. I mean, they're really getting in there and going best of the best. I mean, think of the people that pick the, Reserve wines around the world going grape by grape instead of bushel by bushel or, or you know. So this is that kind of process. There's a lot of love that goes into this. Wisconsin, very Americana cheese place. Uh, let's give us a little bit of a smell now. A little bit more creamy and a little bit more delicate uh, than the Serenita. Um, very focused. This has almost, you know, on the nose it comes off like like eggs. It comes off like like a scrambled egg kind of component coming through for me, which is quite interesting. It smells like, let's give it a whirl. A whirl. This is good. This is actually a very fascinating cheese. I get a very solid component of almonds coming through, uh, not almonds, almond shell. I mean, you're getting a real almond shell kind of component throughout this. I also get a lot of graininess in this and almost like kasha, which is like Russian, like not grits, but a real like dark grainy, almost like grape nutty kind of, it's very grainy. I mean, that's where I'm going with this. A, a really interesting component of of almond shell and uh, and a graininess, really long finish, much more intense flavor than the Serenita as a whole. I'm feeling this cheese. This is actually cheese I would love, love to have with a high alcohol content Zinfandel. I think they would really be interesting battling each other. Um, I think they could really, you know, balance each other out with the big fruit of a Zinfandel and the kind of graininess component. I keep using that word, but I can't help it because it is so obvious to me. I really feel like I just ate very, very healthy cereal. That's kind of the component I get in this. Um, long finish, again, um, a little, reminds me of some Gruyere kind of style cheeses that I've had in the past, but far better, more explosive, completely covers your palate. Where the Serenita was kind of a focus and stood in the middle, this completely overtakes your mouth. An extremely well-made cheese, quite impressive. Let's move on to the last one. And this is the kind of cheese I get excited about. Because I'll be very honest with you, I want cheese that I have to do this kind of stuff with. I'm all about triple creams, explorators. I, I want it to be really stinky and scary and and I, and I want it to smell like this. And when it smells like this, you know you've done some damage. This is the Grave Brothers. Let's keep doing this, this is fun. Petit Frere. Oh, 
which is, I know, the small version of a frere, which they, they uh, cow, it's pasteurized. This is fun, watch this, it might go there, it might go. Is this fun to watch, folks, to watch the cheese go? Forget it. Anyway, oh, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really, you know, it's got a nice little rind action, kind of a, 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 like a mustard cheese kind of component going on. It's getting really gooey and interesting. On the smell, it's kind of almost like, what's really interesting about the bouquet of this cheese is that it's not as stinky as you would think. This is not the stinky, stinky cheese um, that uh, that I tend to like, that you can get real dirty and really smells like poop and manure and dirty, dirty, dirty things. This is actually a little bit more refined, a little creamier um, on the nose. There is definitely a stinky component, but more like sweaty socks than the real crap that I really like to normally get into. There's also an underlining, there's also an underlining almost citrus-esque component on the nose that I'm getting, which is really interesting. Almost like if you took sweaty socks and just rubbed some oranges on them. You know, you're not gonna still smell any of that orange because it's really sweaty sock, but there's that hint of like a, a fresh citrus component that I find interesting. Mm. This is where it's at. I don't care what anybody says. This is all fine and dandy. But when your mouth is being attacked by these kind of flavors, very acidic cheese, wow. Extremely acidic. Um, it's got really beautiful, I mean I feel like I licked a cow that's rolling in mud all day right now. And you know what, I'll be very honest with you, I like it. It's, it's um, very focused, very explosive, very bitter. Bitter and, and tan, it's tannic. I mean it's just a very interesting, well, oiled machine. I mean it really, really is quite interesting. It's almost got, believe it or not, an olive oil component, which is interesting because we're segueing to that next. I get that kind of acidity. Um, long finish, I mean it's completely overtaken my palate, which is which is a nice thing. I'm glad we finished with it. Um, it, it this is a big time cheese. This is my style. This is the kind of cheese you really want to pair. Uh, Actually, you know what I'm gravitating towards is fruit. This is where when you see apples and grapes, you know, this is where I like taking the grape and just dipping in and, and eating it. I love the sweet, sour contradiction that you can get in that kind of cheese. Um, if you're somebody who likes to explore and try different things, boy, this has got really like, it's really bitter. It's got a really nice bitterness to it. Anyway, if you like to explore, go outside the box. This is definitely the, the cheese you want to try. The uh, Petit Frere from uh, Grape Rose is, Grape Rose did a good job. Finally, Quinta do Bispado. Olive oil, 12 US dollars. Made from Madural, Verdural, and Negrillon. How was that? Negrillon. Negrillon. Let's get serious now. Uh, olives, and this, this is an olive that, oil that's uh, $12, and, uh, and I'm actually uh, excited about trying this. Now, if you know anything about olive oil, you gotta go and taste it. It's like wine. I mean, this is how you do, and, and I'm really excited about it. Remember this glass? Everybody got all bent out of shape. Um, olive oils, to me, are, are really a very exciting category. I really see them exploding in the U.S. over the next three or four years. I think people are starting to really realize how complex, amazing, and just what they bring to the overall experience and food in general. I mean, it, it, it's so multi-dimensional. There's so many things you can do with, from cooking and putting on salads, dipping. I mean, it's a really versatile product and really, I think, is highly underappreciated as a whole. Even with the huge you know, explosion it's already felt in the last two or three years, I think there's, there's a lot more for it to go. So let's give this a little bit of a sniffy sniff. What I always find fascinating about olive oil is, as you know with wine, I'm a huge fan of bouquet. And olive oil brings the thunder every time on the nose. There's just such a golden component here. I actually get a very interesting like pine needle component on this nose, which I find extremely fascinating. There's there's a viscous component, you know, it's does, olive oil does get to smell a little oily. I mean, you definitely do get a little, you know, you feel like you're in the motor shop bringing your needles that you picked uh, in, in the forest. There's also a really nice lemon peel component that I'm getting that you would find like on the top of your espresso. And almost a, uh... God, this smells good, I wanna taste it. 
almost like a fl not flinty I mean it reminds me a little bit of like Sancerre in this way almost like seashell component you know on, on the lingering finish which is quite interesting but overall the lemon peel is very high in this that and god it smells good let's give it a little bit of a taste Now I'm just having fun. <clears throat> that is amazing. I, it was so funny was, I was about to say, this goes down tremendously smooth and then I started choking up. I figured that'd be kind of contradiction. Um, just really cloying completely. You know, if you've never drank olive oil, it's one of the biggest mistakes of your lives. It is an absolutely tremendous experience. Just beautiful flavors. This olive oil is actually extremely floral. It's got a, almost like a, if you ever, Eating a dandelion, I think everybody has, right? I hope. And there we go, that's a lot of good head. I, I really get a dandelion component here. Um, once again, going back to the nuttiness of this cheese, I did pick up a little bit of nuttiness as well. It's that really acidic lemon peel component that I'm really feeling that's on this olive oil. Just really a tremendously polished beverage. You know, this is clearly something that I'm enjoying. I taste a lot of olive oils. This is a lot cleaner, more focused flavor olive oil than I've come across in a lot of products. Carm did a really nice job with this. Um, it's from Doro. You know what I think about Doro? It's going to be bigger than Napa in 10 years, so I'm down with that. And, you know, at the end of the day, all these components, all these flavors, all of what we did here is going to help you build your wine palette as well. I mean, picking up flavors and essence from all over the world is a major, major opportunity and exercise you need to do if you want to pick up the subtle flavors in your favorite wines. Question of the day. What is your favorite cheese? And olive oil. They're both on the show. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Or the cheese world. Whether they like it or not.